If you're watching this video, you've probably already heard about how amazing the RX100 is, and you're probably just trying to justify spending the cash on it. Well, let me save you the time. It definitely is worth it. But today, rather than going over the general operation and specs of the camera, I thought we might focus on the video side of things in this review. Now, obviously, it's not a video camera, so we'll take it a bit easier on it. But other than that, let's take a look at the Sony RX100 Mark III. I'm Matt, and this is QTime. As I stated, this is the third generation of the RX100, and Sony have managed to make their best compact camera even better. So what are the main differences here? Well, I'm not going to go over everything, but for video, the main ones are a new lens, which makes this camera better in low light, improved frame rates, and also the inclusion of Sony's 50 megabit per second XAVCX codec. So let's start with the lens. On the Mark II, we were looking at the full frame equivalent of a 24 to 100 millimeter f1.8 to f4.9 lens. The Mark III, however, has a reduced focal range of 24 to 70 millimeters, but has an improved aperture range of f1.8 to f2.8. Now what that means is you can't really use this camera for any sort of telephoto shots. And that was one of my biggest concerns when choosing to go with the Mark II or the Mark III. But I'm glad I went with the Mark III. The low light images coming out of this camera are really unbelievable for such a small sensor. And to be honest, 24 to 70 millimeters is a great focal range. I've only found the downsides are for sport and when you can't physically get close to a subject. Having said that, with 20 megapixels, you can easily crop the image in later on, but for video, we're still limited to 1920 by 1080, so cropping ability is limited. Secondly, Sony have now included a 720p mode at 120 frames per second, which makes this camera really great for getting some of those slow motion shots. Just like the Mark II, it can shoot up to 60 frames per second at 1080p mode, which is still stronger than some of Canon DSLRs, which are limited to 30 frames per second in 1080p mode, like the Canon 60D I'm shooting on now. Lastly, Sony now includes a new image codec on board. XAVCS shooting at 50 megabits per second, which again is stronger than what many Canon DSLRs have on board today. Having more data in your image will mean higher file sizes, but it will also mean that your image will further withstand editing without as many compression artifacts and blockading as we see in AVC HD. So how is this camera for video, you ask? Amazing. The brilliance is that the 24 to 70 millimeter lens is image stabilized. I've used this camera on car mounts, handheld, on tripods, and each time I've got a great image coming out of it. The fast apertures also mean a nice depth of field, and that means it can actually be cut really nicely between DSLR footage. The flip out LCD is also really nice, in case you ever need to film yourself. And there's also a micro HDMI port on the device, outputting clean HDMI feed. XAVCS, in my opinion, is nicer than AVC HD, especially because it holds up better in editing. What's also really cool about this camera is you can expand the functionality of it through the Play Memories app store. This includes a time lapse app, which adds the ability to easily do time lapses even if it does cost $10. But what about the downsides? Well, just like everything in life, it's not perfect. And unfortunately, that mainly comes down to Sony. In this case, Sony decided to make two models of the camera, one for North America, which only includes the option to shoot NTSC, and one outside of North America, which is powered by default, but can go to NTSC. That should be simple enough, but going to NTSC requires you to firstly format your memory card, and then shows up an annoying message every time you boot up the camera. Whereas on my Canon DSLR, you can freely switch between PAL and NTSC without any need to format the memory card and any annoying messages. Also, to shoot XAVCS on the RX100, you will require a 64GB SDXC memory card or higher. Even if you have a SanDisk Extreme SDHC memory card, it won't work on the RX100 in XAVCS mode. And lastly, no external mic input. So dual system audio is basically a necessity. Now I can sort of understand this because it is a point and shoot camera. Sony probably didn't really consider this, but anyway, I'm just nitpicking here. At the end of the day, there is really no other camera in its class worth comparing to. The video quality rivals some DSLRs and the fact that it fits in your pocket and goes anywhere you want to go is just great. Now I'm not, I'm not saying it's going to replace your DSLR, but having a camera like this in your arsenal just makes it easy to do what you love, which is film without worrying about long setup times and renting a van for all your equipment. The fact that it fits in your pocket and shoots amazing stills just adds to this camera's value. Anyway, that's enough from me. Go out and try it for yourself. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on QTime. So we don't really have much of that cropping ability. Our cropping ability is limited. As it says in my script, I should read that instead of making up my own words. That's what I do. So that would make more sense if I read what was actually on the script. What do you What do you think? Yeah, script, script it. Yep. It also has some great frame rate options. Shut up, bird. Oh my god. I know it's you. I can see you.